Welcome to History's Shittiest Debates and Podcast. Shout out to Dantes. Link in the link in the description down below. Um, his Instagram. He's an academic and he's studying uh, within the medical field, and he helped me during this debate. And anyone else, anyone else who helped my side during this debate, I'll leave a link down below, um, down below in the description to their social media if they want me to. Anyways, that being said, uh, let's continue the show. So, um, yeah, so like I'll just I'll just fill in the blanks for um, anybody that perhaps is watching this on YouTube that you know didn't get the big gist of it. So, so we're gonna we're gonna go from the top here. Um, we're, we're, sorry, not gonna go from the top here. We'll just continue with where we were talking. We're not gonna restart anything. Um, so, uh, hi, how you doing? Uh, hey man, this is kind of like a serious talk between me and him. Uh, not too bad. Yeah, it's all good. Um, I can kind of contribute if you need, but I gotta go in like twenty five minutes. But I can stay for a bit. I mean, like, yeah, sure. He has questions for you. Um, anyways, yo, OP. So, like, um, all right. So, did you want me to continue my story or? Yeah, no, you can if you like. I can run you back through what you were talking about. Right. Um, effectively, you were just saying you're interested in objective truth. Um, you had some health problems, and then that kind of spurred on uh, an attempt to, I guess, look at diet, and also because you watched a documentary called Game Changers. Yeah, and, and another, then yeah, another thing too is like I used to watch like um, YouTube political videos, and I started to realize something that a lot of people give a lot of good rhetoric, which is rhetoric is good, but a lot of people don't back up what they what they say with facts. And then sometimes when people don't back up with what they say is facts, sometimes they say a large amount of things that are objectively false, like we all make mistakes. So I wanted to not lie to people. Uh, you know, I wanted to um, challenge my own perspective as well. I forgot to say that. So that's kind of what led me to going to where I'm at right now. Um, so yeah. Uh, Mind if I ask, like, why do you, um, mind if I ask you, ask you a question? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, like, why, um, why particularly do you, um, eat meat? Like, why do you, or eat animal products particularly? Um, well, let, let me get a good, so I, I'm also, like yourself, interested, I guess, what I would, gen I'm going to assert, like, kind of put these words in your mouth, but I'm interested in maybe kind of optimal health or also kind of, like, treating um, disease, like, especially kind of modern disease through kind of diet, because I believe the modern diet is uh, highly causal in a lot of the, like, even though we have a longer life expectancy, we look at the, kind of the quality of life for a lot of people is rife with like um autoimmune diseases and you know as you uh i don't know if you want to reveal I, I won't say what um kind of thing you were talking about but uh there, there are many people that have you know and i i've followed uh, on the internet specifically youtube as well watching a lot of people discussing diet and also philosophy and all these different things and how they kind of intersect which is like this pursuit of truth because people are experiencing kind of such pain through digestive issues or um or other autoimmune kind of conditions and thus kind of they start to look out into other communities um, and I guess uh, veganism uh, is a, a quick one or especially over the last 10 years has been kind of like a rising interest of people's to, to kind of address some health issues um, and I guess it, there's also a lot of kind of uh, vegan uh, activism that, that goes around like in, in major cities and stuff like that with um those uh, I don't actually know what they're called. Uh, the people that do the anonymous kind of masking and stuff, or whatever. Yeah, it's uh, um, it's called anonymous voice for the voiceless. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Voice for the voiceless, and um, then there's also your kind of doctor advocates like uh, McDougal and McGregor, and, and then there's documentaries that came out. Um, specifically, uh, it was Penn uh, P uh, Penn Gillette, I think his name is, um, that was in with this documentary. He was also which one was he in? Um, the what was the one that was called like the truth or something like that? The um, anyways, there's been a few uh, pretty high profile people come out and and support kind of vegan diets and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I was interested. Or I am interested in in overall health uh, optimization. I guess I would say, and that's not to say like kind of like because that's a funny thing to to express because it, it goes down rabbit holes of like, well, what actually kind of is optimal, for example, like, uh, 
even like levels of uh, working out and stuff like that in a gym may be kind of detrimental. For example, when we increase our you know body mass and stuff like that, and, uh, there's different things of if you actually wanted to live the longest, it would be a different answer to if you wanted to live kind of like the the strongest or the most fulfilled or something like that. And so. I, I've looked into uh, the vegan diet as well uh, through throughout a kind of a journey, and I guess uh, my my answer to why I eat meat is because I believe uh, I, I eat meat and animal products, and I, I, I put them as a, f- a central focus of my diet. Um, and and the the principle is that the accessible nutrients in the in these products are um, extremely helpful and and uh, promote kind of like if it, they are they are what comprises the the optimal uh, diet like uh, so i don't know what specific like obviously specific people also this is a category that kind of doesn't get opened up that much which is like we we are most highly likely kind of um adapted to an environment and then in the last century we've rapidly moved and this is illustrated by stuff like um, Africans and uh, Asians are typically lactose intolerant, and there's only a small amount of the world that it can really digest lactose properly. But those people that can uh, have access to a really um, nutrient-rich uh, um, source of calories and stuff like that. And this is where a, a different diet for, for potentially different um, racial groups or ethnic groups um, and also specific people might um, – because of uh, specific ailments or whatever, they might do better on uh, different diets as well. So I wouldn't say it's universal at all, but uh, I would say like I try to like when I do give it uh, dietary advice, I, my my advice is often to to anybody to try and get as many what I would say quote unquote high quality. And when I say high quality, like this is. Uh, where I intersect a little bit with with at least some vegans, um, which is I am strongly opposed to like kind of factory farming and uh, modern agricultural processes because one of the cruelty, and th- this has a twofold thing, which I actually I'm most interested in human health uh, because I'm kind of like I guess a human supremacist, uh, human well being, but um, I believe the quality of the meat is is heavily tainted through the the. Uh, factory farming process but also kind of the life the, the happiness and the life of the animal i believe you can kind of taste that as well and that also affects the the quality of the meat and so you, like you actually have an interested just as a pure consumer if you weren't even an animal lover at all um there would be an you would have an interest in in having an animal that had a a, a nicer life and um yeah so that's why i eat meat is because i believe it to be extremely healthful and, and a core component of a of an optimal diet so um I guess I could first start off with like cheddar um, or well cheese. So I just put in cheddar and I just did three ounces, or I, I could just do one, whatever, um, an ounce of cheddar, which an ounce isn't a whole lot. Um, so in particularly when it comes to cheese, like yeah, a lot of the world is lactose intolerant, like you said. It's just you said a lot there, so it's not like I can dissect each part. So you're gonna have to give me a little bit of time here. It'd be easier if we kind of had a short amount of time, like. You know a minute to two talking um you know because we, we already had our little opening spiel but anyway so when it comes to cheddar cheese like i could send you this on cron meter like you can get any diet platter pump it in what you're gonna eat and then take a look so cheddar gives you like just one ounce would give you 23 um 23 gram milligrams of cholesterol when your body makes the vast majority of cholesterol that it needs uh, and it has about 5.3 grams of saturated fat. And saturated fat is, um, I don't know if it's highly correlated with cancer or if it's been proven to cause cancer. I can't remember. It's one of the two. Um, so I, I don't believe that there's any evidence to suggest cheese is healthy. In fact, I live in Canada and actually Canada took off dairy as a part of its uh, recommended dairy, like uh, recommended food groups. Um, when it came to why humans used uh, dairy uh, long ago, now I'm not an expert on this, but what I do understand is that at certain points of history, uh, certain water clean, certain waters weren't clean in Europe. So what the people drank was either beer or milk, and it was an improvise. And you know, not to say that natural is always bad, or uh, you know, isn't natural is always bad. But um, you know, first off, you kind of have to prove that dairy is good for you. It was it was originally designed for like a baby calf, not really a human being. Um. So yeah, and uh, I mean like 
do you have anything else to say about that? I mean, like, I, I'm not sure if you've ever seen. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to jump on dairy. Dairy is a usually a controversial one because, it, uh, like, it's one of the first ones that people eliminate and often find like really positive uh, health impacts, like whether they have acne or or digestive issues when they eliminate dairy. They they uh, they tend to find uh, dairy and gluten are two um, foods that people eliminate frequently and then find uh, good turnarounds. Um, my my answer to quote unquote like milk being healthy for you there's a few things uh, the first one I would argue uh, uh, that I think it like is one of the, the strongest arguments for it is milk is the one food that actually we are biologically programmed to consume it's the it's the you know, we, we consume human um, mammalian milk like uh, obviously like we're also mammals obviously there's a different composition uh, slightly uh, of what a human produces to a goat or, or a sheep or a, a cow or, or a camel or what have you. There's many mammals that we can drink the milk of. Um, but reality wise is for the first two years of our life, we can survive purely off it. And in fact, later on as well, like you can live pretty much entirely off milk because of how diverse the, the range of nutrients is. And it's what's called a complete food. Um, okay, it, I, I, I'm gonna have to just um, like I, I I'm I'm gonna have to just say this really quick. That's that's uh, that's that's that's, that's objectively not true. Like I, I'm gonna DM you this. Like I could DM you the nutrients in in milk. So it when it comes to protein amino acids, sure, it has all essential protein amino acids, but it doesn't have all minerals. It doesn't like when when you say like essential food, like it's kind of like a buzzword. Like what do you mean by that? Because it doesn't have all your minerals. It doesn't have all your vitamins. On top of that, it's not naturally designed for us. I mean, like Beast from the East just but posted. Just, hold, just, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Beast from the East just posted um, an, a scientific study um, talking about dietary dietary fat um, that are linked with cancer. I mean, um, I'm not sure if you ever saw the James Wilkes debate with Chris Kresser. Um, basically, in short, yeah, dairy does have some vitamins and some nutrients that might be able to counteract some cancerous properties. But I think overwhelmingly, it's like. Uh, for a large number of different types of cancers, there's actually a large correlation with uh, dairy. And I'm not super, I'm not super educated on dairy in particular. But when I also, and the other thing too is, um, we've only been eating, drinking dairy, eating dairy for about ten thousand years, which I isn't a whole you lot. I interact time. with what I said because you're completely ignoring it, and this is what, what, a little bit upsetting. Oh, no, no, we we spend the what first two years of our life. We, 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 you said that we're not biologically programmed. No, we're not. To, to no, no, we're, we're, yeah, but that's we spend dairy. the first yeah, two years of our life. Yeah, but I'm talking about cow dairy. No, 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 no. We're talking about cow dairy. Like mammals generally have um, milk when they're babies, not when they're adults. Yes, and then we develop a lactose intolerance, but but European peoples have have mutated to be able to tolerate lactose later on in life, and thus the intolerance of uh, milk later on. The, the reality is, we are programmed to consume milk because this we are mammals that drink our mother's milk for the first two years, and it supplies us with everything we need, including these saturated fats that are supposedly yes, it does. A baby no. lives entirely. No, no, it, it no. Applies no, no, you, yes, it doesn't. Yes, no, no, yes, no, no, yes, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on here. When you say everything, could you just explain what that means? A baby it, sustains its entire life. It needs nothing else but milk for its first several years of existence. This is what most babies, especially like for a thousand, you say we have only been consuming milk for 10,000 years. Well, for the entire human history of uh, since we were mammals, so I don't that's know how many millions of okay. years you want to go back, but we've been consuming milk. Yeah, but that's kind. Of, yeah, but that's actually at this point, it's that's a straw man because I'm referring to cows' milk. I'm referring to milk from other animals. I'm referring to humans consuming dairy from animals past the age of being an infant. I'm not referring to breastfeeding. I'm not going to say breastfeeding is unnatural. So it's negligible though. Like for example, when we're looking at like if you were to have a, an infant that no 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 no, no, no. but you, you understand at least what I'm saying here, right? I I, I wasn't saying you know breastfeeding. Is yeah, not yeah, natural. I understand what you're saying. You're saying okay, there's one mammal and another mammal, and you're saying the milks are completely different, and thus we should analyze them differently. But if we just say milk in general, when we're talking about saturated fats and the and the general vitamin profile of milk, this is actually what we are biologically the only thing, the only thing that we have a natural taste for, that we have a born kind of preference for is milk and then when we move like when we want to go past the category of milk and say okay we're talking about cow's milk sheep's milk goat's milk camel's milk all other am mammals um, minus humans you're saying no this is the category of milk that we can't digest or that we're not naturally supposed to have access to 
although there has been a ten thousand year time period where we have obviously had access to that, um, then then we then we analyze scientifically, then we say, well, what is the comparable difference? What what are we looking at there? And and obviously for a specific like a human mammal milk is like the the saturated fat content and stuff like that is specifically designed for a baby. But then when we're looking at a, like an adult who can uh, consume milk and in addition to other things, the balance of its saturated fat profiles and stuff like that are kind of negligible in their importance. Okay, so you, 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 okay, so how about we just try to shorten this down a little bit? So when it comes to vitamins, uh, whether we're talking, so when it comes to, you know, let me, let me just one sec, milk, because you can get up any diet planner and you can just pump in um you can just pump in whatever the fuck uh actually you know what let's see cow uh, cow so i just grabbed family cow raw milk so let's just take a look at what vitamins this has so right off the bat um family cow raw milk what i found was like 30 like some vitamin a like 10 percent. but when i go to like cheddar and i can i can actually screenshot this from you for you there's no B3, there's, there's, um, there's very little B1, there's very little B6, there's a bit of B12, there's very little fluorate, no vitamin C, very little bit of vitamin D, very little bit of vitamin E. Um, when it comes to minerals, there's no magnesium, very little potassium, and very little, mag um, very little, what was it, uh, very, very little bit of iron, very little bit of copper. It doesn't have all your vitamins and new, uh, minerals. Like, where are you getting this from? Because you're, you're saying this gives you all your vitamins and minerals. Do you have any studies to back that up? It, it's inferred by the reality that, like, a baby... No, it's not. I mean... It's, it. no, but, like, it, where, where it does it... It doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't matter what a baby... And how does a baby that lives off no, milk no, no, for two years no, no, live? No no no, 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 no. It doesn't matter what the baby has. Like, what... Okay, so I'm not... Well, I'm not, No, no, no. I'm proof, not, no, 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 no. You can let me finish. You can let me finish. I'm not super familiar with the dietary preference of a baby in comparison to a dietary preference or sorry the dietary needs of a full-grown adult you're, you're making claims i'm just asking you to give me any studies on any of these claims that's all i'm asking that's no all. there's no study required it's it's it a is. priori knowledge that no, no no if you can't like functionally state like in your own mind okay babies thousands of years don't have teeth they're not chewing up and it's not like we we feed like birds and like chew up and regurgitate for our babies a baby for the first two years Pre teeth, he's not eating solids. He's only consuming milk. You know, uh, Dantes, since you're 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 probably more familiar with nutrition, do you wanna do you wanna do you wanna chime in here? But I don't think that's uh, controversial. Sure, I'm just a bit confused on, on what the claim is, but there there are a couple things that I I find a bit weird because like program is a bit weird of of going about it because it's just we have developed or we have like evolved. A trait that lets us tolerate uh, milk or a certain population that doesn't have intolerance to uh, lactose. But um, I'm not I'm even sure what the, the claim here is right now. But like, just because we can tolerate doesn't mean it still can have negative effects over us in a long period. We're talking about the nutritional completeness of milk, and and my argument is based on that milk is the primary uh, solitary requirement for a baby for for two years of of life, on average or whatever, uh, throughout kind of all humans and other mammals as well. And so the argument kind of extrapolates from there that milk itself is actually nutritious and, and completely uh, sufficient for human life for at least two years and then later on my argument is when we're comparing arguments of other mammalian milk so first of all we're analyzing human mammalian milk and we're looking at the saturated fat profile and all the vitamins and completeness uh, nutritional wise and so there's no contention there because you would have to be kind of a little bit out of touch with reality to argue that human milk is bad for, for humans and then from that, we understand that milk in and of itself isn't bad because we are mammals. And then we extrapolate, okay, well, other mammals, what is the comparable difference between milks? Okay. Um, so, but what, what would be the, the exact proposition? Um, I'm still confused. Well, that milk is uh, healthful. That it's nutritional. That it's got profiles of or adult humans. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something you okay. something you earlier said was that milk has all the vitamins and minerals that you need. I was just stating. Yes. I was just stating that I just I just looked it up. 
it doesn't have all the vitamins and minerals you need. Then you would you would have to explain why babies don't drop dead. Because their vitamin and mineral their vitamin mineral demands will change as they grow older, and I'm not sure. Like, anyways, your dentist is probably better to handle this than I am. But but see, that's a, it's yeah, a logical but, truism that either it either is complete uh, because babies can't like uh, or can live off it, or it's not. And babies would die. Your if, age, if a baby, the difference of no, age logical, changes what you need. Yes. Okay. So we're saying within the period of the first two years, it is complete dietary requirement for a baby. There's no contention there. So within human milk, at least, we say that this fulfills every single basal requirement for a human life to sustain itself. Okay. Yes. Like one... So we move on from that, and then we compare. No, 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 no. I wasn't agreeing. I was saying, okay, dude. I ju I just posted, like, I just posted exactly what I was talking about in in general chat, just so you can see. Like I, I just want to see what was the mineral and vitamin profile. Most foods don't contain everything you need, or else people would just generally eat only one thing. I wasn't agreeing with you. This was two cups of milk. Like any, you don't need to be a scientist. You could just pump this, punch this into any diet planner, and I'll show you approximately what you're getting. Well, not really. Like you got to look at like which milk they're testing and and et cetera, et cetera. Like this isn't representative of all milk, for example. Like uh, again, it, the, the well, truism well, is stated through. Okay, but look, I, I think for, first thing, uh, I'm not sure. No, you, just made, you just made the perfect point right there, and I don't know how you're not realizing this. Milk is species specific. Like human milk composition is completely different. Satisfies the needs of human babies for the first few years of life while they can't eat anything else and then after that uh you know when you can eat solid foods and satisfy your nutrition needs without milk it's just obsolete and then i don't know why you're just assuming and extrapolating that every other species of milk is exactly made for humans. I didn't. Why? I didn't say that. I never said that. That's a, that's completely absurd. But that's uh, interesting. I'll jump on this word obsolete because you said uh, after we can then consume food, it's obsolete. Why would it automatically be obsolete? It might not have everything. Okay. As we grow older, we might need additional I think, uh, I think nutrients. Hold on. Hold on. However, hold on. the milk itself still provides a basal uh, nutrient requirement, and thus it is a healthful food. It sustains us through purely a hundred percent through the first few years, and then later on, it can still be a supplementary food. Is was my entire oh, point. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So the the concept of it being unhealthy. No. Yeah. Opie, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on here. By hold all on. means. Opie, 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 are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I just I'm okay. Here something you, you did say was that it has all the vitamins and minerals you need. I'm, and so when he says when he said that you're claiming that milk has everything that you need, like I, I don't think you're aware of what you're saying and how it's being interpreted to other people. I think you think that people are trying to be aggressive and dishonest to you. I think you just need to maybe slow down what you're saying a little bit, and I'm not trying to be rude here. No, so I, I, I've I've given a clear point, which I've said. Uh, so for the first two years, a baby lives entirely off milk. So for those two years, a baby has everything it needs. Now later on, potentially human. We and this is where the discussion comes in. What are the additional requirements of a now three-year-old uh, human or a five-year-old human? Or alternatively, what I've also suggested was then we compare also mammalian milk. What is the difference in the profile? But the basal profile is actually quite negligible between, uh, obviously cow's milk is a little bit different in like a saturated fat profile, but stuff like goat's milk is very, very comparable. And this is why we can look at uh, the profiles and we say they're actually not that different. So when we start with the premise, and this is why I was just trying to move past this first premise, which is for the first two years at least, this thing has nutrition that a human body requires. And in fact has all the nutrition. 100% of it. Now, later on, I'm not saying for the entire life that you can live off milk, but I'm saying for like a, you actually can live off milk for, for a long ass time. But uh, like it's been used as like medical uh, healing procedures and stuff like that historically. But the, the, the reality is that I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I just want to talk about we start off with a premise knowing that it has a huge amount of nutrition, so much so that for the first two years of a human life, human mammalian milk will sustain us. Now we can compare that and say, oh yeah, yeah, but this is completely different to other mammalian milk. Then I say, well, what is the difference? Where does the difference lie in, in these profiles? You could say one's 37% saturated fat, one's 54% or something like that. So you say one actually has yes. higher saturated fat percent. I mean, like I haven't read a whole lot, but at least from what I understand, I think one of the problems, one of the issues uh, some doctors have with milk and with 
drinking like dairy milk or cow or goat's milk or even human's milk when you're an adult okay. is that you're drinking growth hormones that you no longer need yeah igf1 it's it's like it's pretty much already indisputable that it's considered that's like against uh like work like makes cancer worse cancer oh, what's the word again cancerous you don't need growth hormone anymore so like you have different needs as an adult so so i just wanted to lay this down opa but do you agree that as an adult milk does like dairy milk it doesn't have all the minerals you need and vitamins like i, I just posted it now I'm, I'm not trying to be fallacious i'm not being dishonest i have heard matter. of uh old like well established um medical treatment program which was uh raw raw milk uh i believe it was carrie's milk but like i'm not going to i haven't have read whatever study? you've posted you study? uh i I could find it. Um, I don't have one on hand. Yeah, uh, you but you could, oh, on, you could on, look in. You could look in. You could probably just Google raw yeah, milk treatment. Just, yeah, but you're just you're, okay. So raw milk medical treatment. Dude, dude, dude! You don't even have to read a whole lot. You can just scroll down. I just took screenshots. It's just pictures showing what is in milk. That's it. And, Are I, you talking I'm, about the cr chronometer, like the H? Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm the, just, I'm just, I'm just stating it doesn't actually have all the minerals and vitamins. Does it have a lot of minerals and vitamins? Yeah, but that alone doesn't necessarily make it healthy or unhealthy. It could have other aspects to it. For example, alcohol. Okay, do you do you hold think on, that on, like a chronometer like posting is like the be all end all profile no, it's, of what it's, all? It's, it's it's not. It's not. I I told. I already said this. It's an estimate. But I'm saying you don't have to be a doctor in order to under just just to just to acknowledge the truth that it doesn't have all the vitamins and minerals that you you need. And and that's that's just it. You keep making the claim that it does. And the thing is, is if you're a little baby. Your, bo your body's vitamin and nutritional needs is totally different from an adult. So I, I just want you to acknowledge that for an adult, milk doesn't have all the vitamins and minerals you need. Can you acknowledge that? Yes or no? Uh, I've said, well, I don't 100% uh, know that because I, I know that milk has been used uh, in, in medical procedures. And this is my, my point of contention is this chronometer uh, posting and, and with the milk they've tested to, to get these quantities could be completely different from, for example, and I, I pointed this out at the very start where like if you do certain treatments to milk, you can destroy the kind of profiles of, of certain uh, nutrients within it. The reality is uh, I, I'm not advocating somebody Wait, on, on we, milk diet and we, I stick very clearly that what I'm only actually 100% saying is that a baby can survive purely off milk and then later on a human can either supplement their diet with uh, it, all I'm arguing is that it's very nutritious and healthful it is a healthful food is all my only uh, yeah, point I'm, I, I, I'm just I'm just seeing if we can agree uh, agree that for no, I won't 100% say that you can't live off milk because I think uh, that there's at least some stuff that people have used it as treatment so at least for a short period of no, time no, it can yeah, be, but it, like, it maybe yeah, but it doesn't. It, okay, yeah, but okay. So, so, so here's the thing. I mean, like, it sounds like to me, um, you you haven't really done any research on the 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 the, the vitamin or minimal profile of milk. Does it have a, a lot of vitamins and minerals? Sure. I, I'm not. I'm not even going to sit here and say it doesn't. But I'm just saying you're making claims without any facts, and you're not even trying to look at look at anything. You you can use any diet planner, and it, you know there, there's very few foods that have all vitamins and all minerals, whether that's meat. Dairy, there's very few. I, I can't even think of one thing off the top of my head. Yeah, look, daily, want, daily recommended also... intakes and stuff like that. Uh, again, based off like random, when you look into the history of what these are actually based off and stuff, like they can either be like way underestimated, way overestimated. This idea that this is how much you're supposed to get per day or whatever, just with it, it's uh, I, I don't uh, I don't pray to the, the Lord and Savior of chronometer, but um. We don't. If we don't even to. need to look at the chronometer. We can look at just governmental data and actually chronometer. They get their data from like Food Data Central, like this from the government. Okay, you can look at government data and you can look at you know Japanese and, and German versus American yeah, sure. kind of data, and it will completely yeah, contradict we, it. So you understand that no, the, the it, food sure. sciences. Wait, wait. So depend depends on what we're talking about specifically. If they have a specific connotation uh, to them. Uh, then they're pretty much uh, similar all around the world and like major first world no, countries. No, look at the Japanese uh, daily recommended intakes, but some of them are like 16 times what America states is like what, what you should be consuming. Could you give an example? Like right, but like what? I said to look at it. I don't have a specific example. I know that there is some extreme like differences in American yeah, and Japanese. Could you show me? I've 
I've can given you, you me the me? country specifically. No, you can no, kind of dude, fish out. There. Look, it's it's really I, I just told hard you that, to... What do you mean? I just told you the country. I'm sure it's not that... Why do I have to yeah, Google look, Japanese? Do you... Well, because you made okay, the claim. Have you, look, have you ever, have you ever, take, have you ever look, heard, have you ever, that, have you ever heard of switching the burden of proof? It's called a fallacy. It's saying, I, I can claim something and then claim you have to prove it. I can say, you know, the waves move in, the waves move out. You can't no, explain it's that. It's tiresome. It's like your job. No, 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 no. You, it's you very, can listen. Uh, you can listen. You can listen. It's your job if you make an objective claim to prove that claim. Just when it comes to any any sense of philosophy or debate. Because or else anyone can make up any claim and then say that's your job to prove it. If I claim the earth was flat and say, and if I just said, okay, well, it's not my job to prove the earth is flat. It's your job to prove the earth is round. It's your job to prove that it's not flat. That's it's, it's very fallacious. Anyways, yeah. And well, look, 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 I, I, look the, let's go, just go point by point, and then we can go over and we can look at all the data. We can search together if you want. The first claim is, do you agree or not that there is a different demand for nutrients when, when we grow up? Because I can easily show that already from uh, the government. Obviously, if you've listened to what I've said, I don't know like if I should say it again or whatever. All I've said is that milk... So the, the contention was milk being healthful. And no, I no. Mean, if you, if you, no, no. If you, you didn't ask my question. Up. You didn't ask I'll my explain. question. I'll explain. Do you agree? No, sorry. You didn't answer my question. Do you agree? No, what I'll do is I'll frame what I, what I do needs. agree with. You'll listen to what I say and then you'll know what I agree with because I'll say... Why don't you just my, ask my, my question? I um, Opie, I, I, I already says, like, like, I don't blame it if you don't hear everything I say. It's just when you say things a little bit shorter, people get... to do. It's just people are not hating on you here. We're just we're just trying to have a conversation. I'm not, I'm not going to say you said this or that. I'm just asking so I can understand what's going on. Do you or do you not agree that we have different nutrient needs when we grow up? That is a somewhat insulting question because, of course, I agree that we have a changing... Uh, I don't know to what extent this changes from a baby to an adult or a, a toddler to a teenager to an adult to an elderly person. I don't know the exact extent. Okay. And if you were here for the beginning of the conversation, I... I That's I great. So I don't uh, know do you, the specifics, but yes, of course. Okay, would you... I can, if you want, I can go through it right now. I can show you how big the differences are. If you would like to see, I can show you all the evidence right now. How big the differences are from a governmental page from the National Institute of Health. I can show you that, for example, it goes from like eight grams of iron per day to like, or to like 18 or like it, it, there are big differences. Would you like to go over them? Why? Well, because I can show you then that our nutrient requirements are hella different that's not when contested. we grow up. Why would you waste time doing that when that's not contested? Okay, because... Okay, because you, like you said, you're not sure how big the differences but that's are. That's not contested. Right? It's a contested oh, wait, but point it is, is what I'm trying to address, which is the health. Yes, but it is. Milk. It is very. Yeah, sure, but it's it's very important because then we could show. Okay, m so milk. Um, whether milk would be, you know, that neutrally perfect or that neutrally great, if you know, because if if we have different nutrient needs, then it might not be the case, right? Could that be possible that if we have different nutrient needs later on, that milk might not be so, so perfect for us? Or yeah, not? They, they, or obviously, not like, like uh, obviously, I understand the point that you're saying milk is designed specifically for a growing baby, and thus it has specific like nutrient profiles to be only complete. I wouldn't say designed. Baby. I would never say designed. You, you never. Can, you cannot say uh, calibrated together. They evolve together. Whatever you want to like yeah. say, yeah. like design is, is somewhat of a easy reference point to say it's tailored sure. to Fair the enough. two two entities uh, are matched at one point. Or I guess you could come up with some better uh, synthetic uh, combination than than a, than a. No, sure, sure, fair enough. Okay, I, I get the that you don't mean like designed as in a programmed or thought of or like. Uh, you know, w with the conscious mind behind it. Sure. So, um, well, the point being would then be, okay, so um, I don't need to show you because you, you think it's, you would already believe me my word for it or because then we can go over to the next point. We already agree with this, right? Yeah, but I don't know. What's the next point? Go for it. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. We agree that we have different needs, etc. And now the question would be, okay, there's certain stuff in uh, milk still has a lot of nutrients. Milk still has this and that that would be good for us. 
The question then would be, okay, if we look at milk in its entirety, does the negatives out, uh, or does the positives outweigh the negatives? Are there any negatives? Are there any positives? Right? Then we have to look at the whole thing, right? And then we can decide, okay, it would be positive based on our nutrient needs or not, depending on the entirety of milk, everything that's contained. This is what yeah. I mean. this is what I meant by there's growth hormones in milk that aren't meant for you know human adults or teenagers. So would you agree with that assessment that that would be a fair way to to understand where it would be good for us as as adults? Hundred percent. So we, okay. we start off. We, we've already established that it's got good stuff in it because we're not. Yes. Uh, even though we're not going over the exact differences between a baby and an adult requirement, humans kind of relatively stay quite stable in their uh, requirements for for a range of different uh, vitamins. Hence, actually, okay, yeah. like history yeah. of what vitamins kind of um, means and where it comes from. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I absolutely agree. And so, well, m my first point of contention would be, so um, if we don't need growth hormone anymore, if we don't need uh, certain nutrients anymore, like growth hormone, which is uh, real. I mean, uh, I can show you a couple of studies about growth hormone and how bad it is in relate to, to cancer and et cetera. Um, would, would you consider that then to be something harmful uh, in, specifically like that would be one negative of milk I no I wouldn't specifically say I don't know it, obviously you could say I have these studies that show that IGF-1 is associated with you know an increased heart size or whatever and then heart size comes into heart attacks or something like that uh, where you don't want your organs to continue growing into later life or whatever uh, no, no we, in, in I mean, general, I don't know to what extent like specific growth hormones are, are going to have later on. Uh, I do know that overall animal hormones, uh, we actually, you know, it does us a favor to to ingest things that we don't have to make ourselves because every time we have to make something ourselves or do a conversion ourselves, it's taxing our body systems and stuff like that. And okay. so when we're consuming yeah. uh, animal no, hormones no, yeah, in they're, flesh they're, and yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. Uh, they're, there, there are certain hormones that we might need, yeah, of course. Um, but so my question to you would be, what would convince you? What could I show you that would show you that the, uh, what evidence do you need to see that it has a negative effect, IGF-1? Because I'm just going over, we're going to go over whether some specific things in milk are negative or not, and then we would go over, or oh, do they outweigh the positives or not, right? So what could I show you that would convince you? Well, obviously, like, you know, toxicity and stuff like that is, you know, buildups and things like that or like direct kind of, you could see like, oh, this is, you know, blood serum levels or whatever where people drink too much milk and then like the, it's, you know, having like blood pressure issues or something like that. Like there's something okay. more direct than like okay. maybe 50, 60 years later, they have a heart attack or something like that. Like, well, I, 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 don't... I, can pull some, I can pull some out right now and we can look at it. Maybe you can tell me if you think this is good data or not. Would you like to see it? Yeah, we can look into IGF stuff if you want. Okay, sure. Um, so let me. I just want to go first over a petri dish where because I think it's a pretty cool one. Let me just find it real quick. Okay, there we go. I found it. And culture. So do you know what a culture is? A petri dish culture, etc. Vaguely. Yeah, just when you put it in, like you have a thing, but so. Here, for example, from this study, uh, from Ten of Lions, a, a scientific journal, cow's milk stimulated growth of uh, prostate cancer cells in each 14 separate experiments, uh, preceding an average growth rate of 30%. In contrast, almond milk suppressed growth of cells by 30%. So this is just showing that milk has a greater uh, growth potential for cancer cells uh, compared to something like almond milk. Okay, so if someone has cancer, a growth hormone, because... Yeah, the growth hormone makes the cancer a grow. That is a cell, it also grows. Yes. yes. Okay. So that would be one. We can go, let me show you another one. So let me just get it here. You know, we just go over a pet one, then, and then we go maybe a specifics or something. And maybe you can use so it. Maybe like you can show me. We, it, like, if you're continuing upon people having cancer, and you want to argue that people with cancer shouldn't drink, you know, stuff with high amounts mm -hmm. of IGF one in it, we could kind of, I, I could be happy to concede that. But then that isn't applying itself to like a, a natural, like kind of, or a, a frequent occurrence. When we're looking well, at the mass population, you're still not advising against the, the mass population drinking milk. Well, uh, uh, 
I'm I'm not ent- not entirely sure about that one because like it's just that uh, you know we have um, a few cancers is, is pretty common. I mean it's, it's not like the number one killer or something, but um, you can uh, as we grow older you're more exposed to being uh, to grow cancer due to your telomeres shortening up and more DNA damage etc. You're more uh, you, you have more chance of getting cancer. So. The, the older you get, it's it's probably worse to drink milk if you want to avoid cancer, since it has IGF one, etc. I, I I want I actually like post another one showing do that, like do you acknowledge like within your analysis of like how you're trying to weigh up like the risks or whatever of like drinking something that has like a huge amount of healthful benefits and then saying oh but like look here's some things that if you have cancer you're gonna have your tumor blow up and then like for example I could just the the first one that came to mind was let's say you're looking for some calcium requirements and I assume that if, if you wanted to make your vegan uh, statement for, for calcium you would start to point to some green vegetables uh, specifically spinach or broccoli or something like that or would that be mm-hmm. my? Uh, would I be correct? And that's where you're going to point to to get. Yeah, calcium. If, we're, if you're, yeah, if you want to say, well, we need calcium, then I could say, yeah, I could say, yeah, we can get calcium from other places. And then, but for it, example, it, like if I, I do want to say one thing, like, let me comment. And then, please, please let me comment on one thing you said, though. I, I get that. Yes, I'm going to show you things, but you're now saying, oh, but everyone shouldn't drink or something. I just want to make clear the first thing I want to show mm-hmm. that there are negatives in milk. Afterwards, I would extrapolate. Okay do the negatives outweigh the positives first i just want to show you that it's going to decrease testosterone it's going to this igf one in it which is the worst for uh, things and we can talk about cholesterol which would like you know or sa- sort of fat, saturated fat etc then and then i would like can talk okay does it outweigh the positives but first i just want to show you all the negatives well, to know that the positive it doesn't really matter if you because the the basal thing is where we say okay we need for example let's say calcium like that, there's no contention. We say we need calcium in our diet yeah. somehow, yes. and then so the statement isn't, oh, does the positives outweigh the negatives? Because it wouldn't matter if there was all the negatives in the world. If you had to do something, you had to do it anyways, and so Absolutely. you have to put something in in its context. And the only reason why you're saying uh, does it outweigh the the negatives is because you're contrasting it to something else. Let's say, for example, yeah, you're correct. You're correct. And broccoli, where you say, oh, you can get this, but then I can do exactly the same thing and say, well, okay, does this positives of how much calcium you're getting from this spinach outweigh for example the increased like the hardcore increased rates of heart attack with uh, oxalic acid intake yeah we, we could go we could go over all the those ones yeah we, we uh, i think we should i think we should uh, exactly do that and i i want to say yes if you have nothing else to consume then you should absolutely consume uh something uh and yeah if you need calcium and you can't get it from somewhere else then yeah you absolutely need to do that so i would be talking this case about someone that has the the capability of eating something else so whether milk would be preferable to broccoli or spinach or anything else right so that's why we we should definitely um yeah we 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 need and we should go over everything specifically yes that we we should absolutely do that that's why that's how they evaluate and i think the most important thing that we could look at in the end would be okay do people that drink milk live longer etc those those things is living longer the the ultimate uh, of what you're uh, aiming to achieve? Well, um, so better life somebody? quality and better yeah, so better life quality and quantity both. So quantity and quality, yes. I think we need to reset the debate proposition. We're just talking about dairy, and it's just pointless. You no, know, but I mean, there there are some specific claims I mean, about dairy on the he's, table. He's so from the east, when we first started this, um, I asked him if he wanted to debate or if he just wanted to talk in general. So. And, and I asked him if yeah, he was initially about veganism. Now we're just, this is just kind of out of hand. It's just yeah, out of hand. Yeah, well, it depends. Opa, do you want to continue this? Well, I, I wouldn't have bunked it down so hard on the one top deck. It was something that it was the first one because I think uh, you spoke about milk or something like that. And I wanted to defend milk uh, immediately, but I think that I forget what all the points were now. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that much more time. I did tell you like, an hour, about, about an hour ago that I would just have a half an hour conversation, but I will give it all another right. 15 minutes if all you right, want. So um, I guess well, we can always continue later as well. So, yeah, uh, well, but I'll, I'll step out. But yeah, good talking to you. Like, dude, uh, Hopefully, you know, we, we, I think we should definitely look into everything specific. Hey, uh, Whether the Alcali or not. Dantes, maybe you should DM him some of the studies you got. Sure. Uh, so, I guess I'll send you a friend. Oh, okay. Before you go, is there anything else you'd like to quickly touch on? or? 
I will. Uh, we could maybe get one uh, brief, uh, like move along subject or whatever, if we wanted to to get one more thing because everyone's here to listen or something like that. Um, and as I said, I'll give it fifteen more minutes or you twenty more minutes. You want to talk about the like, philosoph- You want to talk about the philosophical aspect of it? Do you believe like what you want to? Talk yeah, I about? think that's an interesting. Yeah, I think um, it, we we can maybe move past nutrition because it goes into a lot of like uh, empirical sciences and stuff like that, and then kind of contestions on what like requirements we have and all these things. And so yeah, maybe we, uh, you can maybe uh, present something uh, philosophically if you like. Okay, so I can have a proposition um, that uh, a, a vegan world or a world with people consuming less meat or no well, no animal products or less animal products will uh, will be beneficial towards um, society as a whole on um, an environmental level, mental health level, as well as uh, economic level. So I wouldn't mind talking about that. Yeah. So ba- um, basically, th- this- a vegan world is better for society is my proposition. Yeah, so I, I completely uh, contest probably like every single one of those points, uh, and so I guess this rapidly devolves into an empirical, like like the citation, and so I guess if you want to go down that realm, it will probably fall back into a little bit more. But I think it is as much as possible if we can kind of uh, focus it on kind of our own internal kind of uh, core principles and why we what how we feel that relates back to what a vegan right, lifestyle so would, you... would. Okay, so. I'm actually curious. Do you care about animals, or do you care about humans, or? Yeah, I, I like I I would call myself an animal lover uh, per se, uh, but in the sense of my overall uh, assessment is that uh, animals, uh, human, like I'm a what I would call like a human supremacist in the sense of I don't believe when, it, for example, it comes to questions like name the trait. Uh, that this is even a valid premise to begin with that we would even consider like obviously name the trait gets into an abstract realm, but in the, when we apply it to our universe. Uh, how we're looking at us and them, I guess, is is a completely different picture, and I've got a few internal reasonings as to why so, that is. Name name the trait is a good consistency test, but it's it's not really yeah, it's not an end all be all. So, in particularly, um, I, I guess one particular issue I could I could just tackle is the effects that it has on slaughterhouse workers because you you do care about humans, right? I uh, my my primary uh, objective is, is human flourishing, and I think that like a part of human flourishing is the coexistence with nature and animals as well. And so, how yes, is factory but, farms nature? Well, th- this is the thing you'll never see me ever advocating okay. factory who, who farms. Who did that? Before. The obese from the east. Just, just dude, just let him finish. I um yeah, so definitely when it comes, I I, I think the the way we're engaged with uh animal husbandry and all this thing is kind of is extremely perverse and this goes into kind of like the elements of like capitalism and how and profiteering and things like that um but yeah so i do care about humans uh i, I don't think the, the the idea of you know killing an animal uh like in a certain way obviously it can be traumatic and, and for people that work in slaughterhouses i i doubt that this is a, an optimal mode of of human existence in this current iteration and so i would be in lockstep with uh with uh vegan advocates that were for I do know there are some of them, but the the ones that are advocating for just like, for example, um, uh, changing, uh, uh, not changing, what, what would you call it? Like uh, reforming, sorry, reforming uh, kind of farming processes to be more humane and stuff like that and, and push it into. But I do know there are also some vegans that go on the other agenda where they want to make it kind of as extreme as possible because they want the entire process to end because there are some that believe oh, any extreme as any possible. Is- extreme as possible sounds kind of. You're gonna to have to excla- you're gonna to have to really explain that one. What you mean by that? So, like, I was just saying, uh, I uh, and I'm not trying to represent this as any of your opinions or anything. I was just saying there are some people that believe any animal murder or exploitation is, is wrong and stuff like that. And so their aim is to like they don't uh, mind like it, it's irrelevant to them if it's for example somebody having their own uh, chickens in their own backyard or raising their own animals and slaughtering their own animals like that. Uh, compared to the factory farming process, they don't really see like because it's suffering is suffering to them. Um, that's where, like, I guess for me, philosophically, a lot of these uh, moral calculus questions really come undone when, for example, comes to. Sorry, I'm gonna rail off a little bit just back to the the subject. Okay, of, this is I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna have to stop you here. Um, like for example, when I mentioned something about chronometer, I mentioned one thing, then we kept talking about it. If you mention like five things, it's kind of hard to talk about each one. So like. I'm. I'm not trying to be rude here, but like. No, go for it. No, just go for. Uh, go for a response of what I said, and then maybe I'll, I'll pivot later. 
I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, like, I don't know if you really want to finish, but you know, I guess, I guess I can go. So, I mean, like, um, and particularly, there's, there's a few different ways you can look at this, right? Because I've actually been looking at this for a while psychologically. So, when it comes to wh whether we're looking at veterinarians putting down animals, which you know, in my opinion, is one of the most humane ways you can fucking put down an animal. Like when we put down humans, like when humans ask to be killed, it's kind of very similar to how we kill animals. It's, it's a, it's a quick and painless death. It's an injection. Um. You know, and uh, e even amongst veterinarians, there's about 11% rate of symptoms similar to traumatic stress. So there's a good chance about 11% of veterinarians experience some level of traumatic stress or around 11%. And uh, when we're dealing with slaughterhouse workers, one of the articles I linked you was from a lawyer. Not only do they suffer from PTSD doubling, which is a form of personality fracturing, and then uh, desensitization. And slaughterhouse workers are a lot more likely, um, in one study that I sent you by Amy Fitzgerald, to commit crime, violent crime, and uh, wherever there's a slaughterhouse, there is often found a more likely link towards crime, violent crime, and uh, sexual crime. And in fact, there's a whole um, there's a whole um, theory on this called progression thesis in 2002, which only has more validity as time has gone on. Uh, Beast from the East, goddamn man, you gotta. I'm, I'm gonna mute you. Sorry. Um. So, right, 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 right. Um, not, ang not angry, you beast, uh, just hearing your typing. So, right, getting on from that, like, um, I, I could also talk about even how kids, when they harm animals, how there's increased rates of crime and whatnot. But in almost every single instance where I find humans harming animals, I see increased rates of mental health and usually crime. Now, I haven't found any statistics on, to be, to be charitable and even to try and criticize myself, I haven't found many statistics on hunting or fishing and killing insects are probably non-existent, but yeah. So I mean, like, I I I I don't see how slaughter, you know, killing animals in any shape or form is beneficial towards humans, even if it's done in the most humane way possible. Well, that would like so uh, it's actually quite an interesting um, approach that you've got there, and I'll concede that it, like uh, when it, I would say that uh, a lot of that would probably be like a selection bias, as those people that kind of go into that field would already be the types that are inclined towards that. But also, like it would, to even have that practice in your kind of community and stuff like that is kind of a, a scourge on our society to a degree. Like I, I would say that again, the, the unfortunately the the mass kind of uh, slaughter of animals like has uh, within it uh, those implications. Um, I, don't, I don't have a direct solution for that. Like when, when I romanticize uh, animal slaughter, it, it's done on a much lower scale as you were talking about, for example, fishing and hunting and you know raising your own animals. Obviously, this isn't uh, practical for, for the vast majority of people. And so this is where we have the current system in place. But um, yes, that's definitely a concern. Uh, I, I wouldn't uh, deny that, I guess. So I mean like um, in, in particularly, so like, yeah, you can look at the studies I sent you. Um, you know, one of which was from a lawyer, one of which was from, um, one of which was uh, a, a study done looking at different countries controlling for populations, one of which was a Yale Global Health Review that was referring to some of these studies, and one of which was, like I said, the veterinarian killing pets. But um, I could also go on about the animal empathy link. Wherever kids have animals, like pets, they're more likely to show pro-social behaviors. More research needs to be done exactly why. Is it because the animal cares for them or is it because the human has something to care for? But humans are more likely to have pro-social behaviors less likely to to experience uh, less likely to be i guess you could say um uh humans less likely to be fucked up I, in a short simple sense i could send you that study too i'm i'm you're probably not too interested in that are you the animal uh, at least from owning pets right I'm, i might give it a look you can send it if you like um uh, where I'd like to pivot this was where I was uh, going to bring it back to before which is we we spoke about this initially when i when i said kind of like that I was what I would call like a human supremacist or something. What I would like to question, I guess, is the, the inverse of that where it comes to kind of egalitarianism and the differences like where we do value a human over an animal and, and to what extent and how we do justify that. And then also a little bit of a side point of like the, the different hierarchy of animals. I, I did question when I first came into the server, like kind of one of these uh, premises, because what I feel is to be one of the biggest contradictions is that it starts to equal, we start to equalize kind of the validity of other animals uh, to an extent. And then also how we contrast the death of a, usually humans tend to have a bias for, for larger, more sentient, quote unquote, uh, you know, creatures that we, you know, we have an affinity for obviously ones in our kind of social contract, for example, dogs and cats in the Western world. Um, larger, also we have a bias for rare animals, uh, endangered animals, and stuff like that. 
and we have a uh, you know a disdain or not a disdain but we do culling and you know rec- uh, environmental care and stuff like that and this is uh, sometimes very necessary to for example promote the life of one animal we'll maybe slaughter many of another animal uh, and so I was curious as where kind of the philosophical consistency comes in from your perspective like when it comes to killing an animal is it is it justified uh, which ones are more justified than others if you if you believe so so first off I'm gonna say, okay so you're, you're essentially asking my moral framework which is fine so my personal belief as a vegan um, my definitions have changed over the years but vegans are people that wish to decrease the amount of demand for animal based products and increase the amount of animal based products and services and increase demand for all um, non animal based products and services there are people that have their own personal subjective um philosophical moral system of uplifting rights and decreasing suffering that try to act in line with their morals so um, my, my my first gist off is like it depends if you're a deontologist or a um if you're like a deontologist or like a fucking um utilitarian yeah like it depends on your philosophical framework right so i'm not gonna come in here and be like a moral puritist and say oh well you know killing this is fine killing this is not fine if like something is let's say um there's a certain level of, uh, what was it? Uh, and there's a certain level which an invasive species becomes too much of a problem for an ecosystem. There's a certain threshold where I'll say, okay, it's time to kill it. Like, I think there's a pine beetle in BC that, um, where I live that actually literally, um, I'm not super educated on it, so I might be wrong, but they essentially kill the trees and then the trees become really dry. And then when a fire happens, the whole fucking forest lights up. So I wouldn't, I would be for killing those beetles, but once again, it really depends. And, you know, sentient hierarchy, yeah, I agree. But and particularly, I'd say I, I want to avoid collateral damage and um, I want to try and uh, move people towards plant-based alternatives for the economic reasons for how it affects slaughterhouse workers. And I, I also, there was another thing I forgot to mention to you was also um, pet rights. So I was wondering if we can move on to pet rights, but... um. Uh, did, did, or did, yeah, or did I'll I just, give you uh, answer? I'll, I'll, did I not answer well, you? Did I, was, that, was that bad? It was, was it good? somewhat of an answer, but I think it's a. It, and, and, uh, I'll just we'll move on a little bit to the pet rights, but I'll just say it sounds from where you were initially going with it comes from like the the mental illness of the slaughter workers and stuff like that. It, it was a lot of consequentialism and kind of like like even just then you were referring to like kind of a pragmatic approach where it comes to a certain kind of trade off, and in one point there's a trigger for you and it's like oh yeah we have got to cull these animals at this point because you'll look at you'll you'll listen to some scientific expert. And, and listen to the pragmatic kind of rationalization they have to slaughter these animals because they say, oh, look, this is going to do the X, Y, Z harm if we if we don't do this. And so we'll do this to maintain this ecosystem. I mean, and so these seem to be kind of uh, consequentialist, uh, at least justifications for uh, at times where it would still be regrettable, but you would, would be condoning of the, the action of, of mass slaughter potentially of animals, animal life. Uh, potentially, but I'd like to do everything I can against it. I mean, um, if there's alternatives... So I'm not just going to jump on the bandwagon. I'd, I'd want to do research. So I'd say to be about by a case by case scenario. So is that good? Is that shitty? Is it you know good response? Uh, well, Can we move on. I, I think that it goes really deep once we start to kind of because then once we start to question consequentialism and pragmatism, then we just it, like we'll move past. But maybe at a later date we'll go into it. But like um, I think it I, I, because it goes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did, I, no, no. I did just we'll we'll do we'll do your uh, animal pet thing uh, real quick, and then we'll wrap it up from there. So I think I, 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 really think, I think I'm gonna just summarize it up like this. So I, I'm gonna first talk. Um, I'm gonna talk about just two real quick things: pet rights, and then I'll mention um, you know, uh, what people consider to be humanely slaughter. Um, so with pet rights, like it's a similar thing, right? So people that abuse pets are more likely to commit violent acts. My opinion: if we were to get to a point where we could get enough people to be vegan. Um, and if we were to eventually be able to get to a point where civiliz- our civilization could legislate these animal rights, all animal rights, then um, I think it would decrease the amount of human suffering and animal suffering. In fact, in a lot of countries, it's legal for people to harm some sort of animal for some sort of reason. Um, and it's not, not to say that there aren't nuances where people could eat meat and still legislate pet rights, don't get me wrong. But um, basically, uh, there's, there's an increased rate of... Um, domestic violence wherever you find people harming animals but being able to legislate them rights would also help humans as well and when it comes to humane slaughter uh last but not least a, a big thing about it is um actually before we move on to humane slaughter there was one study which i can send you out of a bunch of women who on a women's shelter like like 28 women i think 71 percent of them admitted that their spouse threatened to harm their animals 
uh, 51% or 50 something percent said their spouse harmed or killed an animal and 30 something percent said their child tried to harm or kill animals. Um, now, and particularly when it comes to like fucking, um, what was the other thing I was going to mention? Uh, cause vegans don't just argue for not eating meat. We argue philosophically, you know, from reducing suffering, like blah, 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 blah. But, um, particularly when it comes to like, um, uh, um, right, right, right. Killing like animals that you raise in a farm. I still have issues because number one, even if we decrease the amount of slaughter going on, it doesn't change the health side effects that these people have from it. Number one, number two. I mean, like, if you were to raise anybody, or if you were to raise a dog or any human being, and if that sentient being trusted you and loved you, or had some sort of trust towards you, and if you took advantage of that social contract, contract, I find that to be kind of. Um, not only do I find that to be sinister, but in my personal opinion, I find that to be um, unethical. The trail of trust, if it's if it's not if it's not, um, if there's no justification for it. In short. That's just my perception. I mean, like, a good example of this would be, like, Silent Hill. Like, where that girl essentially got fucking murdered by her mother at age seven because her whole existence was to be raised as a human sacrifice. I find that disgusting. Um, you know. Yeah, so... <clears throat> when when a... This is kind of more kind of moral calculus stuff where we're talking about like minimizing suffering and all these things. And, and so when it comes to – it's quite hard to actually calculate out these things. But also when it comes to, for example, who's your preference to, this goes back to like the equally, uh, equality traits and stuff like that. Because if I value like a slight increase in a human's happiness over like the mass suffering, let's say, of, of a potential animal, even if that animal is suffering, for example, I could say a dog is suffering because it doesn't have the freedom uh, that it otherwise would if it was out in the wild, if it's uh, a domesticated animal. Uh, but I say the increase in, in you know that it's a human right per se to to have a, a pet animal, and and that's all all the kind of risks I guess that come involved with that, which is some people abusing the animal, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, when it comes to this, actually meshes in when we're looking at like from an evolutionary basis, uh, we understand these animals in a way it, it was somewhat voluntary. You could say that we kind of culled off the ones that didn't choose to like so it was like you know do or die type thing but in a sense like these animals have benefited heavily from a uh, co-adaptation with, with humans like these domesticated animals will uh what well, this is one of the main i don't I usually make it myself but it is something to reconcile when you understand uh, that if we stopped uh, farming these animals to the extent we are, that these animals would cease to exist there would be no purpose for them They're, their only existence and, and and somewhat like of a responsibility that one almost has because once you've kind of effectively mutated an animal to the point where it couldn't survive on its own where for example sheep are so docile that they would just be you know uh, slaughtered by by foxes and, and wolves or whatever uh that like without our protection uh so there's like some type of responsibility that like you're either leaving them out to like start like what are we going to feed them until they eventually die of old age or something like that etc like and, and protect them and and make sure that these animals uh, live out their life happy but then also never allow them one of the the finest pleasures in life of, of procreation and that's where like most animals are desiring of doing that you can say that many don't get that opportunity when they're getting slaughtered as well i mean um, like this is oh are you done or really? Yeah, I'll, I'll just wrap it up and say this is where we start to do like the moral calculus stuff and we need to really kind of bunker down what, what are the, the core principles and, and where you're kind of coming from. And it, it, I think where it really comes unstuck is where you, where you fail to recognize the, the stark difference between humans and the assigned moral responsibility that we give humans and then all other animals that, that we give none because they don't uh, assumedly have the same cognitive functions as us. I mean, like this is where kind of like, you know, I know you don't like NTT, name the trait. But even though you don't like it, the hypothetical intellectual consistency test this is where it kind of comes in. Or if I said name the species, I mean, um, you might think I, I don't understand that humans uh, can, can do certain things. Like, I'm not saying we should give pigs the right to vote. But um, do, do you want to go now? Because, like, I, I've kept you here for a bit more than half an hour. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll – um... Maybe I'll end with this, which is my general response that I think is pretty decent to the name the trait, uh, and I'll see what, what your response to it is, uh, which is whatever trait that exists within a human that makes them morally culpable for their actions uh, is the trait in which enables it to have superiority over 
these other creatures. I I think it's all kind of I think to some extent NTT is a little bit depending on your environment it's kind of arbitrary if you don't have to. So um but well, not arbitrary I mean like killing an animal is arbitrary if you don't have to. When you say cognitive functions I could just say moral agency well I mean like if someone was to say moral agency um because you mentioned moral like uh, cognitive functions. Like one of the definitions of moral agency is an animal being able to know the difference between right and wrong. Like dogs know that. Pigs are smarter than dogs. You know, most mammals actually have a con a very basic concept of moral agency. Nowhere near the level of ours. So I mean like that's just kind of my perspective on Would it. Would you hold a hold up though, you wouldn't hold a for example, if a dog like I have a hunting dog in this house and mm -hmm. um we raise rabbits, and if you leave this dog dog anywhere near the rabbits, it will maul these rabbits to death. Even though it knows it's wrong, we've trained this dog not to do it. But if it got its teeth around it, it would it would love to do this. That's what it's been trained. That's what its instincts. It like shakes, and it can't help itself. Would this thing be morally responsible for 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 doing for slaughtering like a hundred rabbits if it got the chance? Not near anywhere near as much as humans would. I mean, it, well, that, like I said, it has it point. has a like I said it has um. I didn't say it had the same level of moral, like, moral agency, but I said it has some basic level. Well, I would. Uh, it's an. I, I haven't thought about it like that. That we actually could assign a moral responsibility to a dog. To me, that would be a little bit ludicrous. We would typically say the dog has no responsibility. It's I, an instinctual yeah, creature. I'm, it's kind of like it doesn't have yeah, control over itself. I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying one of the definitions of moral agency. If you're going to go off that definition, I'm just saying it has a very early precursor of moral agency. That they actually do have a concept of right and wrong, and not not all dogs would do that. If you trained it not well, so I should maybe I should correct my speech. It's not that they don't have moral agency. Perhaps they do. We don't know. But, no, but culpability. My, my point, in the my sense point, that we don't assign point. culpability. Like you wouldn't no. punish that dog. You wouldn't beat that dog or, or do something. Dead. For example, if you were to get a human and you saw the human rip apart a hundred rabbits just for fun or something like that. So like, you're sometimes telling like, me. So you're telling me if you put a dog in the timeout or if you, you or if you come up with some sort of punishment to to disincentivize the dog, you don't do that. Everyone punishes their dog. Just they don't beat their dog. It wouldn't be everyone I know uh, punishes their dog. It wouldn't be a moral form. culpability. It would be this would be a consequentialist type thing that you would be training yeah, your I'm, dog. I'm, yeah, this would be kind of sick to to punish your dog because of like some moral wrong it did. You would be punishing that when quote unquote punishing. You would be training your dog not to do the same thing again. I mean, um, like yeah. So once again, I guess to wrap it up. Um, in short, I'm just I'm not saying it has the same level of moral agency. Of course, it'd be ludicrous to say that we give anywhere near the same level of moral agency to a dog as we do a human, right? It would be ludicrous and insane. I'm just saying they have some early precursor of it uh, or some very early development of it. And I, like, also like when it comes to like fucking, um, when it comes to, like I said, with an raising animals to slaughter them, but the reason why I said this is where NTT comes in is because at the same time, if the justification for raising these animals is that they can live, I mean like, then technically couldn't we just, in I mean like it's, um, I mean, like, t to some extent, you could just use that same justification in a similar manner towards humans if you didn't have a human supremacy. And the thing is, your human, any level of human supremacy is just based off of conditioning of what you've been used to. So all it takes is for somebody to, to, perhaps, um, to, to perhaps move outside of that, either philosophically or be pushed outside of it, such as a slaughterhouse, to then, um, like, once again, just treat people the exact same way as uh, they treat animals in a... Manner. But anyways, I think we're done for today, so... Yeah, no, you're very right that it gets into grey zones very rapidly, but that's where it all comes into kind of... And it, like, this goes into deep philosophical stuff of what, what like, uh, what can we hold somebody morally culpable for? But that, I think, is the main point of, of culpability. And when, when we make arguments against people, uh, it's, it's we're trying to hold them culpable for their actions. We're trying to say, you are an agent, and you have the, you have the free will to choose to either harm this animal or not. And if you do choose to harm it, then you're culpable. For example, you're you are now uh, capable of being accused of being a quote unquote bad person or a person that has done a bad action because you are free to choose, and you are then culpable for the consequences. For example, if a country that has uh, legal ramifications for for such an action. Um, but I, I believe this is the very nature, the very fact that we have. Uh, this as a property of us uh, and other animals we we don't kind of arrest other animals or we don't hold them you know we, we don't try to convince them of it obviously i'm being a little bit ludicrous there but this this is where i, I believe this trait i don't know 
it, it's probably a bit of a cop out to, to the the principle of the name the trait, but I, I think because I, I view the name the trait as fundamentally flawed uh, as the way it approaches uh, the, well, the, it's the good. nature between it. It's humans. good. It's good for hypotheticals, just to think hypothetically for meta ethics. But it's not good for applied ethics, obviously. And I can agree on that. Like, it's, it's okay. a huge difference. Like, I think we can both agree on that, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so uh, cool. I, like, once again, we can have this conversation again if you want. Um, I enjoyed this talk with you. Um, so once again, are you sure that you're okay with me uploading this to YouTube or no? Go for your life. Okay. Um, uh, thanks for the chat. Uh, we'll probably so, continue it later because I think we only scratched the surface. Does and anyone so, th does anyone else have an issue with me uploading this to YouTube or? Yeah, you know, I'll give it like a week or two. You'll probably have to ask that gentleman uh, that you also used his name as far as I'm aware, but you'll probably. Have to uh, ask he's that been gentleman. on the internet before, Dantes. I I don't think I really need to, but um. Anyways, no, it was a good talk. Um, yeah, good talk. Uh, feel free to look at any of those studies, and yeah. And I, I feel yeah, bad for I, keeping. I feel, I I feel if... bad. I feel bad for keeping you here past a half an hour. By the way. No, no problem. I, I I'm a free agent. I, I'm morally culpable for my choices. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm curious if anybody else. I don't know if you're going to stop recording and other people are going to talk, but I might just um like I'll I'll, I'll just stop talking and mute and maybe like uh, listen in a little bit and maybe type some. Um, but I, I'm curious is if you're all going to stay here and have a little chat or anything like that, I'll probably just chill around a little bit.